And here we go, with yet again another Wi-Fi battle against somebody, and my voice is going all up and down and whatnot, because it can. Honestly, it's not a day without your voice randomly just spurting up and down in pitch, for no apparent reason. Anyways, this is a battle against Bot of a God, I have no idea where we battled from, I think it was either Quid or in BZ stream. I know he has a YouTube name by the same exact account name, so if you want to check him out, then do so. Anywho, his team looks pretty strange-ish. I don't know. My team looks pretty strange -ish too. Actually, all teams look strange unless they're the same cookie-cutter teams people like to use, but that's a completely different story. So, after the black and white screens of the trademark games, black and white, we will eventually be presented with two trainers that are going to throw a bunch of little tiny capsules out that will release some Pokemon creatures that are monsters and stuff. So I'm going to lead with Peanut Butter because I figured he was going to lead with whatever was in the lead slot of his team, which was actually, I have no idea what, I think probably a Bisharp. I don't know, I can't remember. So Selgor and Jellicent. He's going to Spikes and I'm just going to Scald because I really don't have anything else better to do and I can't really do anything else to him and I know that Aselgor just comes in, sets up Spikes, and then usually dies. Having used it before in the past, I would know. But that's not what we're talking about here. Peanut Butter is just going to be called back because I know that things will happen. So I'm going to go out to the Cockamouse. Yes, you get a How I Met Your Mother reference. Go and rejoice in harmony and everything else. And Aselagor is either going to stay in or switch out. I don't see why he would switch out because, yeah. He goes for a Focus Blast and misses, but I don't really think that would kill me, but it would have definitely weakened my Cockamouse because we all know that it just flies around and is invincible and can't be captured and everything else, something like that. I honestly don't remember, it's only appeared in like two episodes, and I don't really follow the show that much. So now he brings out his Mind Shao, or Mian Shao, whatever you want to call it, because we don't have an official pronunciation yet, and honestly, people don't care, because they'd rather call it Kojondo, because we all know that the Japanese names are totally not stupid puns too, because we have to be all whatever about the names, which don't really matter in the end anyways, because we all nickname our Pokemon, so I don't see why people make such a big deal about it. Well, most people think they're Pokemon, so like everybody does. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a battle. He decides that he needs to make a U-turn because he forgot something in his other Pokeball, and he's going to send out his Bisharp now, which is what I thought he would lead with in the first place. Now then, he's probably going to go for either Sucker Punch or something else. I carry Toxic on this set because this is a different team. This is a team from PO. And I'm not exactly sure what I can do here, so I can either just Recover, Scald, or Ice Beam, which... None of them are going to really do a whole lot. He's going to substitute, probably predicting a Will-O-Wisp, and I just recover because I want to see what he's going to do. And he gets a free sub out of it, so that's never good. So Peanut Butter is just going to try and stick to something, some sort of plan, because it knows that things can get wrong when you bring Peanut Butter out and there's subs everywhere. But it's not really that big of a concern, because we all know Peanut Butter will triumph in the end. Or so, that would be the case in a cliché cartoon. But, he's going to dance with swords now, and I know this is a problem, so I'm just going to scald, because we all know that since he is Steel-type, he will start to get really hot, and then he will probably melt at some point. Although, we do not know for sure. I look at Bisharp, and I wonder where its eyes are, because it's obviously got something blinking there, but what does its eye look like? Is it just that big white thing right there underneath its helmet, or what? I don't know, actually. Now he's going to Sucker Punch, confirming that in fact he has that move. No way. You couldn't have told us that without being any more specific. And he's going to finish me off because, as we all know, Jellicent does not take physical hits very well unless the opponent is burned and doesn't have a massive attack stat. So now I'm going to bring out Yummy, the Metagross, and... I'm running max attack, max HP, I believe. Who wouldn't run max attack on a Metagross, honestly? Unless you're running a special set, but even then you should run max attack. Why? Because I said so. Why should you listen to me? You shouldn't. So now he's going to Sucker Punch. I know I can take it, and I can Earthquake him to death, or at least semi-death. So now I know that he's going to Sucker Punch again, because that's the only thing he really has to hit me with. Ironhead's going to do Jack, and... I don't really want to go into further details about that, but 
I know that I have a non-attacking move on this set because it really just comes in sets of stealth rocks and if it can get some attack raises with meteor mash then it does and then it can use some bullet punches to help ease the pain along for the enemy. So he's going to do that. I'm going to stealth rock and now he has pretty rocks sitting around his team which will come in and since they are not wearing sandals they will poke their feet against them and get damaged by it. Although I think the more logical cause is the fact that when the trainer sends them out of the Pokeball they fall to the ground so I think it makes more sense in this game. Although not all Pokemon fall to the ground when you send them out. It just depends on the species, really. But even then, some of them get hit because they're magical floating rocks. So now he's going to kill me off with a Sucker Punch. But I've got something in the wings that will kill him back. Or at least that's what everybody likes to say. Although I don't really think they like to say the kill them back part. So I'm going to go out to my Verizion, which has a cell phone pun for a name because people like to go, oh, Verizon but it doesn't matter too much since we all know that Verizion is just an amazing Pokemon altogether. And I'm going to Focus Blast him for the kill. Since he doesn't know exactly what type of Verizion I am, doesn't know if I'm going to set up with Swords Dance or whatever move I have, so he kind of had no choice but to just die there and he didn't really want to give me a free attack boost. So now he's going to go out to Beanalo, and people seem to think that Gliscor just walls the crap out of Verizion and then they just end up dying, which doesn't it, I just don't understand the point. It's like, yeah, you just wasted a Pokemon. Congratulations. Oh well, I don't really suppose people face Verizion too often, but they should because it's a great Pokemon. It does a lot of stuff. It can do go physical, it can go special, it can go mixed. Whatever set you're using, Verizion is a good Pokemon. That's the bottom line here. So he's going to bring out his Mind Shao again, and obvious fake out is obvious. This is not NVZ, so whatever. But he's actually going to go for the high jump kick and kill me off, which I honestly was thinking he'd just fake out and then proceed to kill me, but he just went for the whole kill and just skipped the second set. But I actually believe that he is choiced. Probably Scarf, judging by the fact that he has a U-turn. Although, I think I figured that out already. Now he's going to go out to Kanye West, which... I just taunt him because I figured he was going to switch since I figured he was scarfed. Instead of predicting, I figure now, because predicting just doesn't sound right. I don't know. Predicting seems to imply that you can see into the future. So I grass not because we all know that Quagsire will die if it touches grass. I get a crit. Probably mattered. I don't know. It really depends on his set. I don't think he would have really been able to do anything to me to actually do a lot of damage. I know Ice Beam wouldn't kill. I know that Stockpile would only prolong the inevitable even if I didn't kill. Obviously it would have been a two-hit KO. And a bunch of other things that I can just keep moan, rambling on about pretending that I am not causing my opponent any harm in the fact that we all know that when you're playing Pokemon, you're supposed to win, and everything that happens to you is obviously hacks. So he's going to miss Stone Edge, which sucks, but admittedly, I had a lot to take that Mind Shao because my team is actually decently built, even though he said that was his key to victory, but then again, I already know that things wouldn't really have turned out much differently if they turned out differently at all. So now he's going to bring out Eviolate Golbat, which can be a pain to take out sometimes, but I know that I can manage it so long as I still have Thunderous, which I still do. Had he not managed to kill my Thunderous, then maybe things would have gone a little bit differently, but I honestly don't remember what I had left at this point. Unless he managed to make a lot of good switches, I don't think he would have been able to win but it doesn't really matter, it's just a game. We play it for fun, and winning just happens to be a side effect of playing this game. There's always going to be a winner, and there's always going to be a loser, and we all know that winning doesn't really help you at all, and losing will help you see the flaws in your team, and sometimes just hacks happens. What really happens in a battle, you can't really determine. It's all just stuff that happens. It's all just a bunch of math. And in the end, that's all that really matters anyways. So Thunderous is going to be able to taunt him and keep him from doing all that nasty stuff like roosting and trying to actually stall me out and try to win because we all know that's taboo. And you ain't never had a friend, never had a friend, you ain't never had a friend, never had a friend, you ain't never had a friend like me as I volt switch back into my lamp. If you rub the Pokeball, the genie will come out. Anywho, I am now going to go out to either my last or my 
Garchomp, I don't remember which. And before you ask, Garchomp was not banned at the time of this battle, so that's why I used it. He's going to Brave Bird, do nothing, and I'm going to probably set up and be a jerk, because we all know that's the only thing I know how to do. It's most things that most battlers know how to do. And I'm going to finish him off with an Outrage, which is Overkill, because it just is. There wasn't really anything else I could do. So that was a good game. And, um, yeah, that miss did kind of do something, but I honestly think it would have taken you quite a bit of trouble to actually take out my Garchomp, and I already know that Mind Shao isn't going to be living in Outrage, even at neutral attack stat. And, uh, I'm just going to end with some random thoughts. Garchomp, I'm glad is banned. I wish some other stuff would have gotten banned, like Excadrill, or at least some form of weather, but... For whatever reason, people seem to be content with the way the metagame is now, which I am not, and I already know that I am not a terrible player. I know I'm not the best player either, but I also know the fact that this metagame is not really what I desire. But I already know that I can choose who I battle, and I don't have to battle everybody. And I have used the same exact team on PO, and I've gotten pretty high ranking with it, so I know that I am at least able to deal with the current metagame, even though the majority of the time this metagame tends to end on one of two things. Which weather can stay up the longest, or will my Excadrill outspeed their Excadrill, or will my Venusaur outspeed their Venusaur? That seems to be the entire metagame. Other than that, it's just weather switching around and all this other stuff. In other news, I'm trying to upload more often, but I don't know. I would love some comments if you would like to leave them. If you do not want to, then you can just go on now, and you've probably already stopped watching the video anyways, because we all know that we have lives, and you can't watch a video that's more than two minutes long, because we all know that I am rambling at this point, so I'm just going to end it here. I lied to you. I need to add one more thing before I finish. I am going to be finishing up some sort of intro thing for a upcoming series that I haven't exactly finished yet. It's a Pokemon battling theme team thing. I've alluded to it before, but I am not... I don't have enough battles to actually upload it yet, so I'm going to do a video with an intro type thing or whatever, just like a parody of the show that I made a theme team out of, so you'll be seeing that in the near future.